Hello, beautiful people. I am Panar Demirda. I'm the co-founder of Kubrick. Wanted to take a moment to greet you shortly before our VFX director, Walter, and our prompting expert, Barish, delight you with their knowledge. It's fantastic, as always, to see you back to our uh, Discord broadcast. The energy is electric. The enthusiasm you bring, it's amazing. Thank you so much. It's thanks to you, our amazing Kubrick family. Uh, some amazing news. We've been getting some really amazing and extremely useful feedback from all of you. And thank you so much. We want to take a moment to gracefully and generously thank you because your feedback is not just feedback. It's not just words for us. It's the fuel that powers our daily mission to enhance Kubrick so we can all access Hollywood quality content in the comfort of our homes. Well, some even more nicer news. Since last month, we have welcomed some of the most prolific content creators and renowned studios to our platform. And something fun and quite unexpected happened to us. AI director John Fingers' post went viral in TikTok and has been watched by two and a half million people. So let's clap John, which is amazing. Uh, today, we have once again Barish and Walter presenting. They have a great workshop prepared for us. It's in fact a workshop because those of you who have a Kubrick license can follow, follow along in your browser. If you do not have a license yet, no worries. Uh, we introduced the limited amount of free licenses. We are going to drop the link here in Discord. Please grab, grab your copy so you can open Kubrick on your browser while we are showing you the workflow. As you know, we're all about tearing down the barriers, making Kubrick more accessible. You know, around here, it's all about Indian spirit and epic envision. Uh, all right, today's workshop will be focused on guiding you through the entire production process, from image generation to final integration in Unreal Engine, ready to be used for your next viral social media post or on your virtual production stage. Thank you again wholeheartedly and welcome. And here you are, Barish and Walter. Please take away. Bye-bye. Well, hello, guys. How is everybody? So one of the things we like to we enjoy doing is asking, where are you today in the world? We have, I know we have somebody from Italy. We have somebody from Argentina today. Bayrish is in Turkey, and I am in Tucson, yeah. in the United States. So let us know where you are so we know how far we go in the world. We have some really um, good friends here also, Daniel Warner, JP, and um, other people. So I hope you enjoy it. Barish, go right ahead. Well, it's great. By the way, we have New York City, Vienna, California, Sweden, Texas, Ukraine. Wow, that's so good. Amazing. It's awesome. And by the way, I love that yeah. intro music. It always makes me smile. Yes, you know, very few people know what kind of music that is. It's actually called Ragtime from the 1920s. <laughs> and it became kind of a staple of the early Hollywood. Well, yeah, so, so what we got uh, in our agenda, Walter? Uh, today we're going to be obviously creating from scratch, everything from scratch all the way to the end when you are actually able to have your own little virtual stage in your Unreal Engine, and um, whatever you take it from there. If you have a disguise in your virtual stage, you go ahead and load that in your uh, end display or disguise or whatever media server you're running. So we're going to start with generating an image. We're going to yep. segment that, see if we like it. And if we don't like it, you guys vote on that and say, yeah, it's good, but I would improve something like this. Well, feedback <laughs> participation is very important for all of us. So. Uh, yeah. Once he does that, he's going to create all those layers. We're going to do the in painting, out painting, whatever we require to cover those empty layers. 
areas that we need for the parallax to be created. Then I'm going to bring those into Unreal Engine and show you how to use some of the templates I've created and how to approach the entire process. So it's going to be pretty fun. Yeah, great. So um, I am thinking for today's scene, like let's have some um, interior. Uh, we will have an interior and then we will have a nice background and maybe we can do some zoom shots on the Unreal of it, on it. And yeah. So, okay, let's see. We need a wide angle shot first, I think. Yes, the other That's thing is one, one of the extra plus we're going to do today because setting up your stage is good, viewing your camera is good, but I will also show you today how to create a sequencer. Because why not? And let's say a futuristic living room interior. Hmm. That's like the way we thought futuristic. it was going to be in 2023, right? We thought it would yeah, yeah. be flying cars, flying cities, floating cities. <laughs> yeah. None of that. And we want windows. Some Mars landscape would be good, isn't it? Yeah, we're moving to Mars after the Earth is done with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So as you can see, we got our three sections and two sections, and now we have one section left for our prompting, which will be our filler prompt words, like for improving the photorealistic quality. Let's say HK UHD. We can have DSLR soft lighting. Iris, do me a favor. The, the text looks very small. Can you read sure. it along? Like read it, read the whole prompt. Oh, sure, 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 sure. Sure. So we get we got we have wide angle shot from the fr from front, symmetrical, futuristic living room interior with futuristic furniture on a spaceship, windows, Mars landscape outside, HK 8, 8K UHD DSLR, soft lighting, high quality, and then I will have some film grain on it. And then let's say some Fuji film the xd3 we have a model like that right yeah yes okay so um and then we need a negative prompt so i prepared a prefix for that and i will also put it in the chat so you can use it for your photorealistic results it will be very helpful let's explain what negative so, prompts prompts do yeah sure now Basically, negative prompts are what you don't want to see in your scene because, you know, um, AI can understand your positive prompts easily, but it cannot um, predict what you don't want to see in the scene. So you need to type specifically what you don't want to see in the generated image. So, for example, we have low quality, bad quality, worst quality, JPEG artifacts, canvas, frame, letterbox, censored, faded, anime, manga, sketch. So because this will be a photorealistic shot. So we put anime, manga, sketch, drawing, cartoon, illustration, 3D, and render here. So this will give a photorealistic result to you. You'd be surprised how much effect those negative prompts have. Because oh, yeah. the language of the, of the machine, essentially, we are actually <laughs> learning because we don't have it 100%. So sometimes, yeah, yesterday we were testing something with, with Gary and, and we were saying, um, I can't remember, it was like rock or, or like a um, wooden well with a bucket. It was actually creating a bucket, but not a wooden well with a bucket on top. <laughs> so that word threw it off completely. So we got to do sometimes with an ink painting, yeah. additional, and that, that really helps. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Walter, we want a scene that is 16 by 9, right? Yes, yes, standard 16 by okay, 9. Okay, so let's put 2080 by um, 720. And I'm going to go with the standard model. As you know, we have four different models. Standard is the um, more easily that you can have your scenes to generate with without any style applied to it. 
we have science fiction model it will um, give you a more metallic more science fiction look and the classic will give you a um, the god rays the haze the yellow tones and the moody is the darker and more raw realism to it so i will prefer to go with the standard right now um, i will not touch the default settings of the advanced settings for now i have high res fix selected Euler A is a good choice. Steps is 50 great. 7 and minus 1. I want to get a random seed. And let's hit generate to see what we will have. And as you know, it's all about experimenting. Maybe we will push that small button like 3 times, 4 times. Until we get the image that we like. Okay, so we got our first generated image. We have, so it looks symmetrical. It's a futuristic living room, obviously. Um, we have some windows. But I can't say that, like, it's a Mars for sure. <laughs> but yes. I think I want it in the daytime. What you know what I love it? about this? I love about this that you can go from zero to immediately like a 20 million dollar setup that would cost to build this <laughs> it's just amazing yeah right? right the production value essentially the production value that you can bring into your production tremendous yeah yeah it's amazes me all the time so let's hit generate one more time to see like i want to have the mars landscape a bigger in a bigger form like I want to see that Mars structures, Mars tones, and the landscape in the yeah, like this. I can yeah, I can you. see some mountains here and the different mm -hmm. structures. Yes, that. What do you say? Mars. Sh shall we use it or shall we generate yeah. one more time? Well, we can always go back because they're all being saved in the buffer. So that's the yeah, 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 of, course. of this. And the other thing is that it's very important when, let's say you go back to the other image. Let's go back to the previous image. Not only yeah. the buffer uh, has your image, it also co keeps your prompt at the bottom. So yeah. you can also go back, make a modification, and then move forward from this basic setup if it was what you wanted to go in, in that direction. So let's go back to the other. Yeah. Let's try it one more time, and, and then we choose between the three and see sure. who votes on these. So I'm kind of um, a clumsy prompt writer, so I lose all my prompts all the time, and it's a good thing. Oh, wow. This looks good. Oh, that's even better, because um, we got a far yeah, right? clearer view of what's going on out there. And we have the, the Mars mm -hmm. Grand Canyon going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's near, but near here in Arizona, near me. <laughs> so what do you say, people? Not only that, but we also have a pulse tree matching the landscape. They even took care of that. Yeah, right. Luxury. How luxurious is that, right? So here's a tricky, really interesting bit. Do you see that coffee table there that is very reflective? Any changes yeah, we yeah, make yeah. That's, that's a problem. There's not a problem. It would be an awesome challenge for Unreal Engine to solve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're correct. And what do you say? Is this, uh, like, do you know some things are, uh, like some interior designers put some sky like, mm -hmm. photo, sky photos to the um, ceiling. So mm -hmm. it is not looking like a real sky. But it looks well, yeah, like it's it, reflecting. It's reflecting a lot, and it's a, it's basically a skylight. Mm -hmm. I think that is allowing yeah. light on light. But we could also modify that. What what are what are the users saying here? What are we voting on? We get one thumbs up from Peter Box. So, what do you say if we in paint that upper area? and see if there's anything else we could get. Yeah, sure, of course. Mm -hmm. Just to take away some of the too much reflectivity going on, even the wall on the left side, but that's okay. It, you know, it, it doesn't bother me. Mm -hmm. So let's embed that. So we 
go into our segment. And then we can just go to the in painting tool, which is the fourth one on the left bar where um, all the tools are located. So I will just get a bigger brush size here. So it will be easier. So what do you say? Um, should I mask over this area only or the entire ceiling? Uh, that area to see what, what else is, is going to do. I'm curious because the ceiling looks pretty good. It has that mold you know that molding around it yeah so it has a good light effect so shall, shall we put another sky or what do you say mm. ceiling it would be a different type of ceiling so i would say sophisticated lighting ceiling i like to use okay. difficult words to see what happens <laughs> but usually you know what the verbosity, the the more, the more um, eloquent I am, the more words I use, I get better results usually. You know, um, yeah. And those yeah, are usually you know, those are words that I, I don't use every day. But I want to if I, <laughs> yeah, if I right. were to write a, a book or an article, I would explain it that way, and usually works pretty good. Yeah, like the data captioning is a huge thing like um you have a photo of the mars on the data and you kept you um the ai is not captioning it like photo of mars it use complex words so when you use complex words you you get closer to the original train data so it makes you um get more of the desired result Wow, oh. look at that. Perfectly clean yeah. with a with a vintage light. Yeah. <laughs> on the, which is great because it kind of matches what we have going on there. I don't know. I, I like it. Right? Mm -hmm. Let's look see at the that. difference. Cleaned it perfectly. Yeah, it's so good. So shall we give it a try on segmenting this? Yeah, let's go. I like it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I will select the segment tool on the left again, the third tool. And we have three different segmenting options here. Walter, do you have a favorite one when you segmenting? Um, in what sense you mean? Oh, object or... Uh, yeah, like... Um, Usually there's over and click right. segment all objects. Over and click, right? No, I don't do yeah. segment all objects because I usually have very particular plans for any any image, mm -hmm. and, and I'm not going to be separating the table from the sofa, for example, because I'm not yeah. going to be sitting with someone there now. But if we were in a virtual production situation, then we would. We can place somebody there in a green chair that is going to yeah. be cleaned out, and it would totally work with the coffee table. You know in front of the legs if that was the case yeah, but right. in this case um i think hover would be better so we can separate this capsule area that we are from the rest of the environment mm -hmm. it's going to be kind of a simple segmentation anyway yeah 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 you're absolutely correct but first i want to try the depth to see what uh, effect we can see because yes. uh, in this specific example we have a clean foreground objects and we are in an environment and the background is very clear so we i think we can easily cut this out with the depth let's give it a try yeah i agree and um just so to let I you know to, to the the users that are here today again i want to thank you for coming in but i wanted to let you know we're making huge progress on the depth um cap caption of things and uh generating those depth maps i've run some tests in the last couple of weeks and it's just amazing how it's detecting things and you're you can properly apply all that once you have the distortion and all these things that i'll explain on unreal engine but it's working really well with curic yeah yeah it's, it's amazing to see so um as you can see we have like the we seg uh, calculated the depth map. It's an automatic process. You just need to push a button. And then it gave us a slider to play with it. So let's see. First sign it to, oh yeah, okay, great. So as we can see, we completely get rid of the background. 
with the play, playing slide, uh, playing around with the slider. We can even play more as you can see it takes the uh, background from the foreground and we can also do the other end to see and to get rid of the interior and to keep only the outside. So what I want to do is I want to remove the Mars environment landscape. Yep. And then I will add this to the segments and I will hide it. And then I want to remove the, like the in, uh, inverse pro process. I want to have only the interior. So only the Mars landscape. So I am taking the other end of the slider. Wow, it perfectly detects those windows. Yeah. That would become yeah, right. a roto, roto work that is done. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? And I added this to the segments too. Now let's see. Yeah, as you can see, we have Perfect. both layers ready. And then mm -hmm. what we need to do is we need to fill the rest of the empty area because uh, we will need it for the second part. Oh man, I wish I had so a drum roll here that I could play back. <laughs> yeah, right. I'll, I'll have music next time. I'll have music set up. <laughs> we should get a mixer, right? I'm getting it. So uh, I will start with brushing around. It doesn't need to be perfect. It will get the enough information to feel. Yeah, your art skills don't matter at this point and for this process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, here we are. It's using it's using as seconds. much AI. It's using as much AI as your regular vacuum cleaner robot. <laughs> That's right. And let's say we want to have a Mars landscape with um, dynamic sky. I wrote sky. Yeah, and then let's hit generate to see what we get. So what it does here, um, as you can see, I masked over the areas of the original image willingly because it will take the information from that pixels to fill out the rest of the area. So it's an important step. You need to take small bits of the original image for it to understand what will be the rest of the image. So, okay. I I can't say that's a bad generation, but it will be useless in that sense, right? Right, right, because we can see kind of another planet back yeah, there. Yeah, that's great. So let's give it a, another try. So at that point, you can always change your seed number. Just add a number or delete a number. It doesn't matter. Yeah, we, we went into the advanced pull down on the right side. And then um, he goes into yep. the seed. Yeah, there you go. So what you can do is ch you can change the CFG scale. So it was seven originally. I put it to four to let the AI take over more because higher the uh, CFG scale, the uh, so it will pay more respect to our prompt. I want to see what if we give the priority to the AI to take over. Let's see. And I want to take this small parts too. So the thing is, when we have a small part like this, like we got one, two, three, four parts of the window and the, like, it, how much percentage does it take, Walter? Like 30% of the whole canvas? Can we say that? Yeah. And yeah, basically, um, if you have more information about to f what to fill in for the original image, it will be better. Okay, I think. Yeah, that Let's works. See. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? Yeah, because I mean, the bottom we're not going to see, even though we had some of that. Um, there you go. Yeah, right. As you can see, I put the our original layer to here. 
and then we got a nice background and we can play around with the parallax preview tools to see how it will affect and where yeah, it is it is on our left side this yeah. is our new tool and our new toy because it's so much fun to play with this thing. yeah it is really where i need the drum roll water <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. So you can see how all that is playing with the proper depth, uh, as if you had that element in three D, and it, it's all working perfectly well there. Yeah, that's great. Yes. So what I want to do is I want to upscale these ones if we are okay with it. What do you think, Walter? Yeah, we're ready. Yeah, I think it's ready because we're getting really good results and I like how it looks. Okay, that's good. So you zoom out on the canvas a little bit and then um, we go yep. to the super scale tool on the left now side. Now I will go to... It is one, two, three, four, fifth one on the left. So, but first let me export my layers. I do that sometimes just out of safety. Yeah, yeah, that's that's why I do that right now. Because you can always bring yep, them back. We get our layers. Do that. So yeah, that's I another want to show point that, that process uh, also. Uh, yeah, let yeah. me do. Let me give a little bit on that too. Let's say you did this you downloaded your layers and you cl closed the browser because you got distracted, worked on something else, and then came back and, and you felt like, you know, I could have worked on that image a little more. I wanted to change this or that. That's not an issue. You yeah. open Kubrick again and you load your layer again and you can still continue in painting, super scaling, whatever it is you want to do, pick it up where you left. Yeah, th so I want to show that quickly. So as you can see, we have import here and I will click on that. I'm selecting my files right now. Maybe you can see it, but yep, here we have our layers back. Our background here, I can get rid of this. And this one too. So I will quickly show something right now. And uh, for all of you who are Photoshop users or similar programs, the layers work exactly as expected in any other photo program. It's really standard and very easy to understand. You can also um, hide or show whatever you want. Um, add a clean layer if you wish. Yeah. So, okay, let's go super scale them. So, as I said, it's the fifth tool on the left toolbar, left toolbar, and we get 2x and 4x. I will go with the Two right now, let's go super scale. It's amazing to have one button process like this in every tool of the Kubrick. Absolutely. I mean, I can't even tell you even a few years ago what it would take to uppress any background plate for us. Yeah, right? effects. Yes, that was a very involved process. So what I did, I upscaled my image as you can see this was the original one and this is the upscaled one it keeps both of them in the layers in case you want to go back and try different things without saving and downloading and exporting it again so what i will do i will repeat the process on this one again and super scale it we super scale the background now yep here we have our background Now this is a 2K image. It was like uh, 1280 by 720. Now it's 2K without losing any details. And we got even sharper details. With yeah, super and that scaling. took like two minutes in total. <laughs> yeah. 
So I want to download, I can delete the unnecessary ones, the older ones. I will download them. So yeah, that's good. Do you want me to send them to you, Walter? Yes, please, yes. So we'll take that from there. Okay, so uh, those are going to be coming my way, and I'll be uh, uh, loading all these into Unreal Engine. Can we can we read yeah. some of the um, text messages? Any questions? Any comments that people have? Sure, we do. Um, we have a message that says sensors and environmental feedback of outside. I think it's about the um, sky in painting. Is it correct? If we missed that, please write it again. And then we got will the live recording be shared at the end? Will it, Sky? <laughs> and we have another question coming by Rune. Okay, I'm just getting that those images and um what other question did we get? Um, I'm waiting for somebody's writing. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. It's great. Um, we will hear this again. So we have one question, Walter. Sorry, before we start. Um, regarding yes. the DAP, will there be a possibility to get the albedo map, normals, etc., for use in Unreal? Yeah, that's a great question. And you're currently um, working on getting different exports in Kubrick. So uh, not in a very short time, but eventually we will have this ability. Yeah, to get we, we've, we've had this conversation. Yeah, we've had this conversation where uh, the albedo, obviously the map maps, the displacement, for now, we're working on depth, which is really part of all the other layers of bump, you know, uh, displacement and uh, depth. And it's working really well. So you're going to have news on that very soon. So let me go back to the process now. I think my microphone is very loud, is it? Um, or maybe I'm talking to your loud. sound. It is not bothering me. <laughs> okay. So I have these uh, two layers that I just download it and i'm just gonna go ahead and bring them straight into my scene the scenes never get too complicated here and the other thing i need to do obviously is import those those um templates that i built before during my development with kubrick one of these is going to be my um the 45 degree cove stage and I import that. Oh, I love the cold stage. Yeah, it's working really well. It comes in with this texture that was originally there, but um, I don't really use it. So what I'm going to do now is Control S to save this image, and I'll just call it Discord 02, because that's our second broadcast today. And I'm going to just drag and drop that stage, that cold stage, into the viewport and now we can see where it's placed now the cold stage works for most cases you got to remember one thing it's not going to work for everything you do because sometimes you do have a ground plane that you want to be able to have that parallax on the side and this is not the most ideal image but sometimes you may need to change that horizon uh you don't see my mouse on the viewport i noticed that's unfortunate. Okay, so I'm just going to delete um, these do, images. You do. You see it, right? On the viewport? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah it's there, it. but I don't see it on my actual screen. That's crazy. Uh, <laughs> um, funny. 
So I'm just gonna delete this shader because I don't really need it. I'm gonna do Control S and Control Shift S to save the entire project. Control S saves your level, but Control Shift S saves everything you've done below the other directories. And uh, I'm just gonna drag and drop my environment here. And there is my material. This is now, so important. Like yeah. So it's <laughs> look. We are lucky that uh, this cove stage <laughs> is gonna work pretty well with the background and where the horizon is located. Because otherwise, you would have. Yeah. I actually had Maya open and ready to go in case I needed to change the UV coordinates and all that. But this is gonna work pretty well. I can tell you already. Things we have here. I yeah, created. Okay. I, I created just a basic level. Because a completely dark stage sometimes doesn't give me a point of reference for scale or for other things. So the first thing I know I want to do with the co the cove stage is um, scale it up about thirty times. I usually do that because it gives me a better look in the in the realism that I'm going for. Okay. So now when you do that, you can see you have a shadow going on here, and this is something that I'm going to be putting in a tutorial. Uh, in the next couple of days, you can see that the directional light here is actually influencing whatever is going on in this environment. So, as I, I already showed in another tutorial, once you drag and drop a texture, Unreal Engine automatically creates a material for you. And what we want to do now is obviously two things. First, make sure that the material um, works without any additional lighting. So if I turn off anything that is out there. All of these are default creations by Unreal Engine. Directional light, exponential, high fog, sky atmosphere. Sometimes the high fog may work because it gives you that ambience that you're looking for in a large environment. Sky atmosphere, you don't really need it. And as I turn it on, you can see it's not really working for our purpose. The skylight works along with that. Um, and then you know, volumetric clouds, we're not going to use that definitely. So I can definitely just delete all these and um, turn back the light on. So we know that we have to work on this material in order to make it display properly. First of all, it's very shiny. As I go into this preview area, I'm going to press the L key and you, you know, drag your left mouse. You can see the light is moving around to show you what this, this oh, yeah. looks like. And I can also change it to kind of a flat plane, so now I can really see what that's going to look like. In the sphere, it gives me better feedback because I have specular. You can see how that highlight of the sun is coming through on the very top left. So what I want to do here is some of the most used shortcuts in Unreal Engine. You press the letter M, and you hold down M while you click left click here and you're creating a multiplier node and then you're going to be pressing number one well you hold one you click twice and uh, you create two value nodes so what i'm going to do is connect the rgb to the a multiplier the value to the a multiplier um, and this we is can go... see them i think uh you... oh what if you oh. share the whole oh, screen hang on, hang on, hang i on, think it will on. fix that yes because I think it's a very important step. Thank you for that. Yes, because I, I didn't realize that this is what it was doing. So let me just share my screen again. Uh, let's go back to the um, to the text uh, messages. Anything that people are asking? Is there anything we can help? I had the whole screen. No, not, re not right now. But I want to say one thing. It is It makes the process so easy to... Like, you can drag and drop everything. Yeah, my computer is um, thinking here. Let me go back to the screens. It's actually the broadcast that is um, quite slow in doing this. So here we go. Oh, yeah. I, should be, I should be good now. And now you're, you're able to see Either my materials asked. editor. <laughs> now, <laughs> this is what I so was saying. asked... Um, could you Let put me... the shortcuts here? So can you go over the shortcuts again, please, Walter? Yeah, I'm just not going to save this so we do it again, right? Um, yeah, great. We were here, and so what I'm going to do is just open my material again. And like as I was showing earlier, um, I'm just going to do the press L key, 
Um, while I drag here and I can see how the highlight is working on the left side and it's very shiny. So this is not what we want. First thing we do, we press M, create a multiplier, press number one, left click, and left click again to create another node. These are value nodes. So I'm going to connect the RGB to the A multiplier, this value to the A multiplier, and I'll explain in a second what this does. I'm just going to connect this to emissive color. And these are very basic techniques that I developed for us to work with Kubrick environments. The other values go to the metallic and specular, so we don't have that shyness that um, is very unpleasant for an environment. What I'm going to do first here is go to a higher value, like a 0 0.7 emission. Uh, so what I'm, I'm going to save. And now if I go back to my environment and I turn off all the lights, we can see that the environment is working perfectly with its own ambient yeah light. Mm -hmm. so that's one thing we we like and we're going to leave it at that next thing we need to do is obviously bring our foreground so i'm going to go import and i'm going to import one of my planes which is a 16 by 9 obviously that i created you can also create it within unreal engine um, i don't need this material so i'm just going to delete that and once again we're going to do control S for saving, Control Shift S to save the entire project for whatever changes you've made. There's one more thing that I want to show you. As we see everyone doing tutorials and everything, we always get these pop up info boxes that I find very annoying because I don't really need to know that information now. There's going to be a command that is going to be very useful to you guys. It's called, uh, look, I just do, do a type tooltips. I'm looking for slate enable tooltips and I'm going to type zero. Okay, so that is going to hide all those boxes. I mean, I actually clicked on these, that's why, but they don't pop up anymore. So they're not obstructing. Oh, that's viewing. a great tip. So remember that one. Uh, just type tooltips. You're looking for slate enable tooltips and you put that zero. Mm -hmm. And then one if you want to bring it back if you really want to see that you would do the opposite you would actually type one and it would bring back those pop-up boxes so now that i have my plane 16 by 9 i'm going to place it there that tiny little thing i'm going to scale i'm going to scale it to 30 and see where it goes and um yeah it may be too big so i'm just going to bring it to 20. and at this point honestly i can just delete directional light and I'm going to leave the exponential fog because it gives you that filmic noise that sometimes you actually want. Okay. Now we drag our interior into there and another material gets created automatically. And here we are. Let me go ahead and save. Control S, Control Shift S. Those are compulsive things that I've done because in the early days of Unreal, <laughs> you crashed yeah, right? unexpectedly when you need it the most. Uh, so we we'll repeat the process here, right? And now, first thing, obviously, L, and I'm just going to drag around to see those lights. And I'm just going to make it a flat plane because this is really what we're going to be seeing. And we repeat the same process. I'm going to control, I'm not, not control, M, just press the letter M, create my multiplier, number one, click for a value, and um, create the other one as well. So... Connect the RGB. Good thing we're doing this more than once, so you guys really learn it. And um, it'll be automatic next time you do this. You will remember it. Now, the value of zero to metallic and specular. So we have, we have it the way we want. This one shouldn't be too bright, so I'm going to do a 0 0.5. I'm just going to save this. And now that I go back to my scene, we're going to see how that looks, which is... Amazing. Oh, yeah. Right? The lightning suits perfectly. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we're almost really close on time. So let's go to the next step. We're going to create a, a level sequence. So we go up here to this movie clapper that we're all familiar with for Hollywood. Add level sequence. I'll call this Mars. Actually, I always start with a SEQ, so they're easy to recognize when you're looking for them, and you can actually search for that. Mars. 
01 because this is our first attempt of doing this. The, the best way, and this is the fastest way, um, we're going to be creating obviously our camera. So we go to the elements here to create our cinematic cine camera actor. And usually it's going to be pointing in the other direction. And uh, we want to rotate it 90 degrees towards our environment. I'm just going to be placing it where I want it. There are so many other things that I would love to go, but we're going to be running out of time. And um, in order for us to really showcase the example today, I'm going to have to kind of rush through this a little bit. But I think uh, everybody's enjoying what we're doing today. So, guys, here it is. Our full setup. This is too bright. I'm going to go wow. back to this environment. I'm going to go back to this. I just bring that multiplier a little bit lower um, to 0 0.5. Because it seems it's already a bright environment. So too much light is actually uh, overblown. And... Um, so we're, now that we are on our sequence, and again, don't forget to save and control save. Um, I think my window got closed here. Let me see where are, there we are. This is a content, another content browser. My sequence is actually here. So drag and drop, grab your scene and camera actor, drop it into your sequencer, and there's your sequence. First thing you want to do wow. is change your, your frame. Let's do 350. So that's going to be our frame length for this sequence. I'm just going to stretch the sequence all the way there. Next step would be to actually start animating this camera. And um, here in the viewport, I'm just going to go to the perspective so I can actually see what I'm doing. And what we want to do is obviously a camera move that will showcase this environment in the best way. First thing you want to do is obviously create your keys. The way you create your keys, you go to your camera component and you press enter. When you press enter, it automatically sets up those keyframes and you already have the first keyframe for your entire sequence. And we're going to go into it. Uh, I'm just going to go here and I'm just going to go in a little bit, press enter again. And then what I want to do is start rotating so it's snapping into the the world because the snap tools are on i'm going to turn off the angle snap and i'm going to turn off the grid snap this way we're going to be able to work better the other thing i want to do is i want to have my actual axis rotation not the world location so this little planet here when you click on that that now that gives you your local access point and it's easier to see where the camera is actually oh, pointing yeah. So remember the shortcuts for this, and there's a lot going on here, but W gives you translation, E gives you rotation, and R gives you scale. So as you can see, if I change this to, see, if I go from world to lo lo local axis, you can see how now I can really see where the camera is pointing. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is rotate it in one direction, Press enter, make sure that we go into, in, into that area. And um, here we go. Bring it back. Transforms are not taking it. Transforms are not taking it. So let's go back. This is normal weirdness of Unreal Engine. Yeah, it happens a lot, yeah. Yeah, so there you go. The transform was not actually taking it, even though it should have. And um, now I'm really going to be working on that. Now we see the trajectory already. It's showing the animation path here. And once I go to the end of the sequence, I want to be able to see the, the other side. And I'm just going to do sort of an orbital um, camera move here in order to see how that works. 
and I do the entire camera component. So we're going to play back Control S, Control Shift S. And as we play back, we have our camera. Wow. In 15 minutes, it's amazing. Yeah, so the one thing I'm noticing, of course, I'm going too far, and I'm seeing the end of this um, at this point. Because of the we're short of time, I'm just going to scale this up slightly. And also making the windows bigger. So what I'm going to do is switch to the um, Cine Camera Actor itself and the sequence view. So now we're going to see it in full screen. And here we go. And since we in painted the background, we don't see any transparent parts when the camera moves. Correct. And I can even extend this to 450 if I want to and continue that move. If I say, you know what, now it looks really good. I'm going to pop back out and say, I want to see what can I see all the way down that area. So if I go to the camera and go a little further and I just want to turn right and uh, continue that camera move and continue the sequence to the end now let's go back to our full screen camera and see what we see i'm going to press g g hides all the little gadgets that you know represent something in the scene so g gives you a clean live view of what you're actually doing Let's go and play back. And Baris, you can comment on this. Wow. Wow, yeah, it looks it looks really amazing. Like we can always have motion blur and effects on this. So um, to give it a little bit more realistic effect applied to it. And we can have blur at the background for a full preview, it looks amazing. Like, um, yeah, it's always good to have some powerful tools to play with and Kubrick is one of them. You can always generate your scenes in like how, uh, like we are in here for like one hour mm -hmm. and we together, we created a- An amazing ready, shot. <laughs> ready an amazing go. shot, a ready yeah. shot. Yeah, it's so amazing. It makes me speechless. It has yeah. an app resolution. Um, so here, from here, you can enhance it in any way you want. You can just bring those uh, spaceships that are going to be flying around outside. Yeah. Anything else you want to do, you're ready to go and enhance your scene. Very nice. Wow, that's amazing. So Very nice. And we, we are got... right on time. 10.58. We have two minutes yeah. for our... <laughs> closing closing comments yeah we got a few um questions um is somebody asked is it possible to download the templates absolutely we are actually placing those on the website for the cove stage for the 16 by 9 also and i'm going to be uploading more because as we are in our internal development creating other things things that involve speed and things that your environments that you're going through I'm going to be creating more templates because these are processes that I'm actually developing as as things come up. How do we do this? And I'm I'm coming up with ideas, and I feel like <laughs> I'm in the early days of Hollywood, but a hundred years later, <laughs> how can we enhance these environments? And it turns out to be in the simplest ways. I mean, I've spent thirty years sitting fourteen hours a day in dark places doing visual effects. And I come here now with AI and Kubrick, and I can do this in minutes. It's just amazing. So we got another question. Can we um, use Kubrick to generate a spherical environment? So yeah, we have a plan about this. And yeah, you will be able to in the near future. You can already do that really... with some workarounds. Uh, and we're going to show yeah, you that. Yeah. Uh, so Pay attention to that YouTube channel because every week we're uploading uh, some tutorials and the tutorials are very good insights on how to do accomplish some of these processes. Absolutely. Don't forget to follow the Kubrick socials for all kinds of updates. 
So we got Instagram. a great yeah, comment. Instagram as well. Nice. Yeah. Great optimization. Looking really good. So helpful. Thank you, everybody. Thank you well, for your Thank you very comments. much for, for being here. And um, here, here's the conclusion. We created this production ready shot of Mars with this amazing lounge. I can almost hear the music. Drinks should be coming <laughs> later. <laughs> so thank you so much. Great to see some of my great friends here. And um, come back, guys. Come back for the next Discord because it's going to get even better. We will see you next time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Barish, and thank you, everyone around the world. Thank and you, we'll Walter. See you guys soon. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye.